Spacecraft aren't just designed to launch, they're designed to evolve. Each mission leaves behind lessons, small failures, surprising successes, and unexpected challenges that shape the future of human spaceflight. And right now, the biggest challenge in the spotlight belongs to SpaceX, as Starship continues to wrestle with the hurdles of deep space readiness. But when a company is built on relentless iteration, one program's problem can quickly become another program's opportunity. That's exactly what's happening with Dragon. This spacecraft, once thought of as a bridge to Starship, is suddenly being pushed into new territory with upgrades no one expected. Instead of being phased out, Dragon is now being reshaped to handle missions far beyond low Earth orbit. And here's the twist. This move doesn't just patch a gap. It directly addresses one of the thorniest issues standing between Starship and its promised role in lunar exploration. If you want to stay ahead of the curve and never miss these kinds of breakthroughs in spaceflight, make sure to hit subscribe, because the story behind Dragon's transformation is only getting started. SpaceX's Crew Dragon has become a central piece of America's space program. Since its first crewed flight in 2020, it has reliably ferried astronauts to and from the International Space Station, proving that commercial spacecraft can replace government-built vehicles at lower cost and faster pace. Dragon's success didn't happen overnight. It came after NASA retired the space shuttle in 2011 and relied on Russia's Soyuz for nearly a decade. That gap forced NASA to fund commercial providers, and SpaceX became the standout, delivering not only a working spacecraft, but also a reusable rocket system to launch it. Meanwhile, NASA's long-term exploration goals have been pinned on the Artemis program, centered around the Space Launch System rocket and the Orion spacecraft. But SLS and Orion have struggled with delays, ballooning costs, and limited flexibility. Unlike SpaceX's reusable Falcon and Dragon, both SLS and Orion are expendable, expensive, and slow to turn around. This contrast has led to growing debate inside and outside NASA about whether relying too heavily on government-built systems is sustainable for a program meant to last decades. That's where Dragon re-enters the picture in an unexpected way. While originally designed only for low-Earth orbit missions, engineers and space advocates have argued that Dragon could be adapted for more ambitious roles, including supporting lunar missions. The idea isn't to replace Starship outright, but to provide a practical, proven backup or complement while Starship continues development. And that possibility has caught NASA's attention, because it directly touches on one of the biggest hurdles Starship still hasn't cleared. Crew Dragon is a proven spacecraft with more than a dozen successful crew and cargo flights. However, it was never certified or equipped for deep space missions. Its systems were optimized for trips of a few days in low Earth orbit, within the protective shield of Earth's magnetosphere. Taking Dragon beyond that environment exposes weaknesses in radiation shielding, life support, and propulsion. For Dragon to be useful in Artemis, SpaceX would need to upgrade it in several key ways. These upgrades would not turn Dragon into a full Starship replacement, but they could allow it to play a critical supporting role in lunar missions. The first issue is radiation. Orion was designed with advanced shielding to protect astronauts during solar storms and from cosmic rays once outside Earth's magnetic field. Dragon does not have this built-in protection. Engineers have suggested adding lightweight shielding materials such as polyethylene or multifunctional composites to Dragon's pressure vessel. These materials are known for their effectiveness at blocking high-energy particles. The challenge is weight. Adding too much mass could limit Dragon's performance during launch and re-entry. But a carefully balanced upgrade, enough shielding for short lunar missions without exceeding structural limits could make the spacecraft viable for deep space use. Life support is the second challenge. Orion's environmental control system can sustain a crew for weeks by recycling air and water, while Dragon was built for shorter missions of up to a week. To extend Dragon's endurance, engineers would need to add larger consumable tanks, upgrade the carbon dioxide scrubbers, and possibly improve thermal regulation for longer transits. These are complex modifications, but not impossible. 
SpaceX has already shown it can redesign life support hardware quickly, as seen in the differences between Cargo Dragon and Crew Dragon. For lunar missions, Dragon would only need to support astronauts for a few days in lunar orbit or on return from the moon, making the requirements less demanding than Orion's but still beyond its current design. Propulsion is another critical factor. Orion's European service module carries a main engine capable of large burns for translunar injection and orbital maneuvers. Dragon, in contrast, relies on its Falcon rocket for all major propulsion and only has Draco thrusters for small adjustments. To reach lunar orbit, Dragon would need additional propulsion capability. One concept is to launch Dragon on a Falcon Heavy with an attached propulsion stage. The Falcon Heavy could provide the initial push beyond Earth's orbit, while the stage attached to Dragon, possibly using high-efficiency engines, would handle lunar orbit insertion and the return burn. This would effectively give Dragon the deep space maneuverability it currently lacks. Re-entry capability is also important. Returning from the moon means hitting Earth's atmosphere at nearly 24,000 miles per hour. Orion's heat shield was specifically engineered for this high-speed re-entry. Dragon's heat shield was originally designed with lunar and even Mars missions in mind, but has since been optimized for Earth orbit returns. While strong, it would need reinforcement and full certification to handle repeated lunar re-entries. SpaceX has already invested heavily in thermal protection technology through its work on Starship, and some of those advances could be applied to Dragon. If certified, Dragon could return crews safely from lunar distances. Size and crew capacity present another limitation. Orion can carry four astronauts for extended missions, while Dragon is smaller. It typically flies with four astronauts, but has less storage capacity for supplies. For lunar missions, NASA could limit Dragon to two astronauts at a time, reducing strain on its systems. This smaller crew would still make meaningful missions possible while buying time for Starship to mature. Using Dragon as a bridge option could allow NASA to continue lunar exploration without waiting for every Starship system to be perfected. Docking capabilities would also need adjustment. Dragon was built to dock with the ISS. To fit into Artemis, it would need new docking adapters to connect with lunar landers or the gateway station in lunar orbit. SpaceX has already modified docking hardware for different missions, so this is a straightforward but necessary upgrade. Once compatible, Dragon could serve as the crew transport vehicle in scenarios where Starship functions as a lander or orbital tug. Several mission concepts have been proposed to integrate Dragon into lunar exploration. One option is to pair Crew Dragon with Falcon Heavy, launching both Dragon and a small lunar lander into lunar orbit. Astronauts would transfer from Dragon to the lander, descend to the surface, then return to Dragon for the trip home. Another concept uses Dragon only as an Earth-to-orbit transport. In this setup, astronauts launch to low Earth orbit in Dragon, transfer to a Starship variant or orbital tug, complete the lunar mission, and then return to Earth aboard Dragon waiting in orbit. This avoids long-duration exposure for Dragon while still leveraging its reliability for re-entry. A more advanced idea involves using Dragon as a return capsule while Starship handles the heavy lifting. For example, astronauts could ride Starship to the moon, perform their mission, and then transfer into a Dragon capsule launched separately into lunar orbit. Dragon would bring them back to Earth. This dual-system approach splits responsibilities. Starship manages payload and lunar operations, while Dragon ensures a safe return in a smaller, already proven capsule. Such a system reduces risk while Starship's recovery and re-entry systems are still being tested. NASA's interest in these concepts comes from practicality. SLS and Orion are behind schedule and over budget. Starship is promising but not yet ready for human lunar missions. Dragon sits in the middle, already human-rated, repeatedly proven, and available now. By upgrading it for deep space missions, NASA gains a backup plan that keeps Artemis moving forward, even if Starship encounters more delays. This is why the idea of using Dragon for lunar roles has surprised many observers, including NASA officials themselves.
It shows how a spacecraft once meant only for low Earth orbit could evolve into a vital part of humanity's return to the moon.